Hey guys, Pierre here from Into Fly Fishing. Welcome to our channel and today we're going to have a look at how to tie the gold ribbed hesia. The materials that you'll need is a long shank nymph hook. For um, the video purposes I'm tying it quite big. Um, in the article and in the photos of the article I um, tied it using a size 16 hook. This is a size 12. To appropriately weight the nymph, I'm using a 3.5mm gold tungsten bead that you'll see when I put it on the fly. For the thread, I'm using Semperfly Nano Silk in white, 50 denier. This is my favorite nymph thread. The tail, I'm using Coq de Leon fibers. This is a whiting tailing pack. Check it out, you can tie millions of flies with this. For the ribbing, some pearl crystal flesh, for the abdomen, um, Hemingway's Hairs Dubbing Plus UV, this tan color at the bottom. For the wing case, I'm using uh, three or four fibers of, of peacock pearls. This is a short bunch that I keep at hand just for doing uh, wing cases. You'll need a hairs mask. Low tech, uh, loon low tech swax. Uh, I'm sealing the fly off with solar rays, thin hard UV resin. And to color the thread when I do the whip finish, I use a brown Copic marker. That's all the materials that you'll need. Uh, for the tools, a vise, a rotary vise isn't necessary. Makes life pretty, pretty great, but uh, it's not really necessary uh, for this specific fly. A bobbin holder for your thread, normal pair of tying scissors, a piece of velcro or a little comb like this, this is one by Stanfo, a UV torch to cure the UV resin and a whip finishing tool. So let's get started on tying the fly. Uh, the first step is to thread the bead onto the hook. Now you'll see that the bead has a small hole on the one side and a larger hole on the other side, on the opposite side. This is called a countersunk tungsten bead. So what you want to do is place the smaller hole onto the hook point, over the hook point and thread it over the hook. Let it sit up on the eye of the hook and place the hook in the vise as you would any normal or any normal fly. So what you're looking for is once again a straight level shank, the hook point exposed and if you're using a barbed hook the barb should be exposed as well. This is a barbless hook, I recommend using barbless hooks especially on freshwater species that you are going to catch and release. It also prevents a lot of frustration on the river when your hook gets stuck in your net or your cap or wherever and uh, you can't get it loose because of the bob. Um, bobless is the way to go. Anyway, uh, let's attach the thread to the hook like so and cut off the excess once it's locked in place. Now I'm going to lock um, lay a thread foundation. You can also add some lead wire to this fly if you want to create a thorax section that's a little bit more bulky. Run the thread all the way to the back of the bead and build a little thread band right there to secure the bead in place. You'll see what I mean by thread band. You'll see I'm building taper right there. Just securing that bead, preventing it from spinning around and doing its own thing. Right, like that. You'll see it can still turn, but it can't come back. That's what you want. So, run the thread all the way back. And before you come to the end of the straight shank, remove a Coq de Leon feather and pull back the fibers slightly to align the tips, like so. Want a little bit more on this size hook, 
that should be fine. So the tips are aligned, pinch it and take a scissor and cut it from the stem. Now we're going to measure the um, fibers. So the total length of the tail should be the same length as the body. So the body is actually the bead, the thorax and the abdomen included. So from my, the tip of my fingers to the base of the tail, that's fine. Transfer the tail to the base so that it's the same length as that you measured and tie it in. But just notice I didn't lay a thread foundation all the way to the back. I'm using thread now to do that because what I want to do is lift the fibers and I can still go a little bit, one more wrap. And lift the fibers, take the thread behind it and pull in the forward direction. You'll see that it lifts them up and it splays them out like that. That's a perfect tail. Now, run the thread forward again, covering the material up, just building that taper. Just gonna turn here to cut off the excess. It's fine if there's a couple of fibers there, the thorax will sort that out. So leave the thread at around one third of the total body length behind the eye of the hook and take a section of crystal flash from the retainer and tie it in on the side of the hook shank. You can also use um, gold wire Hence the name Gold Ribbed Hairs here. Right there. Now, I can take some dubbing wax and pull out some thread and just coat it lightly. This will just help us to form a slender and tightly wound dubbing noodle for the abdomen. Now get some dubbing from your dubbing holder or packet or whatever and just take out a little first. You can always add some later. Add that to the thread that you just coated and twist that to form a nice slender dubbing noodle like so. Wrap the thread forward. Oh, it's not right at the back. I want to make the first turn right at the base of the tail, like so. After that first turn, I'm twisting the dubbing again to tighten it up, like so. Now we can add a little bit more as we don't have enough to cover the whole abdomen. Once you've caught it, just tighten it up. Like that. Now, remember that we turn the dubbing in that direction, so we want to turn the ribbing in the opposite direction. Create a wide segmentation or even segmentation the body with the um, flash. Like so. Just tie it off and remove the excess. Put that aside for, for if you're tying more flies. Now if you see the, the tail is um, turned down slightly you can Take your thumb and push it the nail right up against the base of it. This will make it stand up again like that. Right, now it's time to start the thorax section of the fly. So for this we're going to select 
four or five fibers of peacock pearl. Doesn't need to be that long. Just remember that on a smaller fly you'll probably add less. So I hold them by the tips and I cut them so that they're level. Hold them by the tips, cut them so that they're level. Right. I run the thread forward to just behind the bead and I tie the peacock roll in. Make two or three loose wraps to the back and I pull the peacock roll slightly back like that and now I secure it. Like so. That's what you want. Right, run the thread back again and extend the thread. Now what we do is we take the um, thread wax again and just coat the thread with some wax quite liberally to this time. Now it's time for the hair's mask. So the um, this fly we want to create a buggy um, thorax that has legs standing out of it. So we won't be using the soft hairs on the cheeks of the of the mask. We'll be looking at using hairs from between the eyes and from the ear. Hence the name. So we won't be to to get enough fibers. We we're not going to cut any. We're going to keep pulling out enough until we have enough. So I'm just pulling out, pulling out, pulling out. That should be enough right there. Right, let me attach it, place it on the thread. You'll see this is where the thread wax really comes to assist. And we start turning it. So what you also can do is create a split, create the thorax using a split threading technique. Whatever you want to do is fine. So just turn that around the shank like so. Just kind of take that off a little bit too much. Stroke back any fibers. And now I'm going to use the um, little piece of Velcro and just comb out the fibers. And I'm going to try and comb the fibers to the side and down. Top, I want to keep as clean as possible. If you have fibers from the top, stroke them down like so. Now, we're going to pull over the peacock roll fibers over the thorax to create the wing case. Be careful with this thread not to cut the material. So make a couple of wraps first and then pull it in, like so, just want to pull a little bit tighter and cut off the excess. Stroke back any fibers again. Now take your permanent marker and color the thread to the desired color. That's why I love using this white thread, you can just color it to anything you want. Take your whip finishing tool and do a whip finish right behind the bead. Like so. Cut off the thread. Now stroke out any fibers that you don't want. You'll see that some of them come out, some of them stick. Like so. Now to seal the fly, take your UV resin and apply a drop right on top of the thorax, similar to a um, copper john, creating that sort of thorax, like that. I'm not going to seal the complete um, circumference of the fly. Just going to do that. 
take your time to spread it around. Like so. Just seal your um, UV resin again to prevent the light from or the sun from um, curing it while it's in the bottle or the dispenser and zap the UV resin on top of the thorax. And there you have it. That's a complete um, gold ribbed hazia. One of my fa favorite type of dressings of the gold ribbed hazia. It's caught me so many fish, especially yellow fish here in South Africa. But I've caught trout on it all over the world. And I'm sure that you guys will too. So um, please like and subscribe to our channel. Till we see each other again. Cheers.